the blood. It gives us the free admission and access to the presence of your personal power. God, you said, ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 13. It's the blood of the Lamb that calls us close. Yes, your blood. Yes, your blood. Don't you hear? into your presence. Yes, with reverence, but also with confidence. Boldly we approach your throne, not in condemnation. Lord God, we approach you with a reverent awe, the fear of God that's connected and joined to the love of God. As we pursue you, as we come after you, and God, we realize it's by the blood of the Lamb that we have this access, this free admission to the presence of God still saves, to the presence of God that still heals, to the presence of God that still delivers from devils, to the presence of God that still restores marriages and homes. Hallelujah. And to the presence of God that still fills with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. God, we thank you for the access that the blood of the Lamb gives. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your hands one more time in this place. Yeah, we thank you for your blood. Yeah, we do. Thank you for your blood. King Jesus. Oh, sing it again. What can wash away? Feast of Weeks at Pentecost. 
And Lord, as they heard every man speaking in their own native tongue, as pastors already read in our hearing this morning, Lord, they were marveled. They were amazed and in doubt. Acts 2, verses 12. Say, what does this mean? Lord, they didn't understand, but in verses 11 of Acts 2, they were hearing everyone speak in their own language. The wondrous works of God. Holy Ghost, I still believe that speaking with other tongues as your Holy Ghost gives the utterance creates an atmosphere for the wondrous works of God to manifest. You said in Jude, verse 20, beloved brethren, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 21, keeping yourself in the love of God, looking for the blessed appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some about God a tongue, a language in prayer that I can't understand with my mind. My understanding's unfruitful, but though I speak mysteries unto God in the Spirit, hallelujah, Lord, it possesses me with a supernatural faith from another world. Holy Ghost, I thank you for the times I didn't have the faith to pray. There was a faith from another world that I couldn't even comprehend except to testify it's supernatural. It made no sense why I could believe in the midst of this. It's all because of you, Holy Spirit. You said in 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, for we have received the same spirit of faith. Therefore, we believe and have spoken. Holy Ghost, you are the spirit of faith. Wherever you come in supremacy, wherever you're permitted by the seeker to rule and to reign and take complete control, there will be an atmosphere of faith that's created. Not just a faith in the Son of God, but the faith of the Son of God Himself manifest. <coughs> Holy Ghost, you are the spirit of faith. When you come, it's not hard to believe in it. Building yourself up on a most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude verse 20. Anybody want to experience a holy faith? And 1 Corinthians 12 depicts as the gift of faith. It can't be conjured up. It can't be worked in. Come on, somebody. It's a supernatural impartation that comes, amen, into the heart and life of those who have been possessed, whose hearts, amen, have been ruled by the person of power of the Holy Ghost, and he has come in, and from their mouth, they sound like they're from another country. Come on, somebody. And they speak an unknown language. Anybody ever been there? You didn't know how you were going to make it through this, and you didn't know how to pray. You were going to do and the Holy Ghost come and he began to pray. 
sing with understanding. He said, I will sing with understanding and I will sing with the Spirit. He said, there's times I pray with understanding. That means in a language that you understand. Every word I've never said a lot that comes out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying. He said, there's other times I pray and sing and it's in that tongue. In Acts chapter 9 verse 17 the Bible said in the word of the Lord that Ananias laid hands on what at this time was Saul. He had just seen Jesus on the road to Damascus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout that's the road we need to get on. The road where we led him to Damascus. Somebody shout Holy Ghost tear every mask off. Hallelujah. There he was ready and surrendered and fasting for three days blinded by the glory of the light. Somebody say blinded by the light. I told about that rock song from the seminars. Come on somebody. He had saw the glory of Jesus. He had fell down in an Acts 9, 4 and 5. He said, Lord, who are you and what do you want me to do? You know you've met Jesus. You know you've stepped into his glorious life because there's two things that will hit your spiritual DNA. It's birth is this. Lord, who are you? I gotta know you. I can't just go to church and hear about you. I want to know you. I gotta see you. I've got to get acquainted with you intimately. And next he said, what do you Jesus said, go to Straight Street. Somebody shout, when you meet Jesus, you'll find Straight Street. You'll find a location in the Spirit. Come on, somebody. Come on. You won't need GPS to find the address. You'll find Straight Street. If your rib was limp, limp, come on, somebody. And sir, you didn't like hers. You liked other hymns. You'll get Straight Street when you meet Jesus. Come on. 